all the Pokemon we've kind of come to know and love when it comes to the Lost Zone toolbox. So many options available to both of these players through this game. We'll talk about some of the differences and what some of the key cards are for this specific matchup as we get into the game. First off, prize cards going out. Zamazenta, one of Raymond's kind of main attackers yeah. in this version of the deck, is in the prize cards. A mm. pair of Chorus Experiments for Jack, a Chorus for Raymond, and that Radiant Greninja. Kind of awkward prizes, honestly, for both of these players, yeah, too. Yeah, definitely. These are all resources that we see pretty heavily for used for both of our players. So we'll see how that comes up here in this match. But this is what we've been waiting for here, Chip. Both of go. these players have prepared for this moment here. And one of them is about to be crowned our champion here in Peoria, Illinois. I am so ready to kick things off. We have the fist bump and we are underway in this grand finals. Here we go. This finals is underway and a draw and a pass from Jack Carter. Is that what I just saw? I think that is what you just saw, Chip. That's what I saw. So. Wow. That is incredible. We are over here on Raymond's side now, but I believe this is the second turn of the yeah, game. So Raymond going second. Raymond is able to attack this turn. It is technically possible for Raymond to win, but this is a more slow yeah. build of Lost Box, you know, focusing on the Kyogre, right, and most other matchups. So we're not going to really see too much of a pop-off with something like a Raikou or a Dragonite coming in to take the knockout on Greninja turn one. So Jack can at least breathe a sigh of relief there, but yeah, this setup, not ideal. Now Battle VIP Pass is not going to be live for Jack moving forward. Yep. You're going to have to hope to find some Colrus, some Comfe, or something to get things rolling next turn. Absolutely. It's a race to the prize cards here. So the fact that Jack Carter just had to draw past nothing here that he could do in the hand is detrimental. You lose an entire turn here. And you need absolutely every edge that you can get, especially in a sort of mirror match. So Raymond Long going to be able to kind of take this turn. We're starting with that battle VIP pass. So taking a look through the deck here and is going to be able to uh, draw out some Pokemon, but also keeping track of prize cards as well. Yeah, so we should take a moment to kind of mention some key cards for both of these players do it. in this matchup. So Raymond isn't really teched for the mirror, so to say. Does have one copy of Roxanne in the deck that absolutely could come up at the end of the game, try to disrupt Jack, leave him with just one uh, couple cards in hand, two cards in hand, and then try to clear the board with something like a Sableye. Uh, and also does have an Echoing Horn, which is just kind of natural in Kyogre. Mm -hmm. It just turns out it can be pretty nice in a matchup like this one as well. You could find yourself in a situation where you can board lock your opponent, keep them off of Sableye. And that really is the big attacker for both of these players in this matchup, is that Sableye. You want to be lost mining as quickly as possible, and you want to be lost mining as often as possible. Spread those damage counters, take multiple prizes in a turn, and it's going to be a little easier for Jack Carter to stream Sableyes because he's actually playing one copy of Clara in the list and also mm. one copy of Pow Pad. So that makes it a lot easier to keep those Sableyes rolling turn after turn after turn, just gotcha. being able to add them into your hand. And then even if you need to, you can Pow Pad back that Clara once again. So a lot of consistency options there. That's uh, great to have for sure in this long game because, uh, yeah, don't be mistaken, even though we could say see multi-prize knockouts from either of these players, oh. this is going to be a long game. Wow, this hand is just, wow, this hand has nothing going on for Jack. No energy, no oh, nest no. ball. And the draw for turn was possibly the worst one he could have gotten. Was it Battle VIP? It was a Battle VIP. No. Oh my goodness, no playable cards from Jack Carter. Not a single card in the discard pile here. We're over back to Raymond Long's turn. This is definitely not panning out to how I thought it would be. Almost an unbelievable sequence of cards from Jack. Yeah. I mean, it, it has to be the like perfect combination of just unplayable card after unplayable card. Raymond gonna happily send this Pokestop to the Lost Zone. You don't yep. wanna put that in play <laughs> no and give way. your opponent a chance to make something happen. Three Another. cards in the Lost Zone now. And one more thing too, the two copies of Energy Recycler ditched right away. Normally yeah. such an important piece for the Kyogre, but you can see right away, Raymond isn't really gonna try to go for the Kyogre, more yes. than likely. Yeah. I think actually it's more likely to see a Surf from Kyogre than it is to see an Aqua Storm in this <laughs> matchup. I have actually surfed in the mirror match before. Are you, are you serious? <laughs> wow. Okay. Hey, listen, Kyogre's got 130 hit points. It's pretty annoying to Spoky. KO. And Surf KOs basically everything else in your opponent's deck. 
That is very true, Chip. Well, I would be interested to see that. But yeah, it's funny. I was talking about how uh, slow of a grind this matchup can be, but honestly, it is not looking like that at this point in time. Raymond Long is just ages ahead here with so many cards already stacked up into the Lost Zone. And Jack have not even played a card yet. So this is wild to see. We see two Comfes have already been used here. And yeah, we're just stacking cards up and we still have lots of uh, cards to go in the hand. And the thing is though, with the way Raymond's deck is built, there's no Dragonite, there's no Raikou. So even if Raymond gets to seven in the loss one, which we see right now, I yeah. actually, I don't <laughs> think that there's anything Raymond can do to take the knockout. The only attacker that could possibly swing for enough to knock out the Pidgey, uh, the uh, Radiant Greninja would be Pidgeot V, which does require you to flip a coin to do that extra damage. Well, Chip, we got a top deck here of a Nest Ball. So okay. this is at least something Jack can do, playing this Nest Ball and going through the deck. But I mean, you can just see it on Jack's face right now. This is absolutely behind. horrible to see. <laughs> Did you hear him? <laughs> what did he say? I'm a little behind. <laughs> <laughs> I would say so, yeah. Jack. Uh, yep, and sometimes that's just how it happens. For some reason, I feel like this always seems to happen in our finals or like our top four yeah, matches, yeah. but hey, that's Pokemon TCG. Uh, we have Escape Rope here for Jack, at least, so we're going to get a Flower Selecting, and it's going to be okay. an easy choice, Battle yeah. VIP And pass. for the Pokestop, okay, let's Very see what nice. this hits. A boss goes down, only mm. an Escape Rope. That's not super helpful. Yep, just an escape rope there. Of course, the items and the tool cards are separated now into their own categories. So, yep, Pokestop played, but just a little bit of utility there for Jack Carter. It's just going to be a pass over to Raymond Long back in the driver's seat here for this turn. What is the hands looking like? Did you get a peek at it, Chip? Yeah, it looks like there's a couple nest ball, a few energy. I think if Raymond could, if he could... Uh pick out what he wants to try to do this turn. It's definitely to try to use Sable. I try to get to 10 in the Lost Zone. You need three more and try to get that Lost Mine off. One Flower Selecting and one Colrus can make that happen. Yep. Cramorant as an attacker obviously still works. I mean, Raymond is so, so far ahead. Mm -hmm. And Jack still just really has nothing going on. Raymond does play one copy of Lost Vacuum. That would be a pretty good card to find if you can try to get rid of this Pokestop in play it would, of course, fuel your opponent's lost zone just a little bit, but your opponent, you basically know, is really riding heavy on this Pokestop being able yeah. to do something. Yeah, that would be super pivotal here for Raymond to be able to bump. We'll see if that happens here, but the lost zone continuing to stack up. Chip, you were talking about the MVP for both of these players is Sableye, but both of our players have to get to 10 in that lost yes. zone to be able to use the Sableye and that lost mine. Luckily for Raymond Long here, we are going to see that Hisuian Heavy Ball have some utility to get that Radiant Greninja out of the prize cards. Yeah, the thing I worry about, though, is if you put this Greninja down, you don't have bench space for True. a Sableye, and that's kind of a position you don't want to find yourself in as a Lost Box player in the mirror match. Now, you do have Radiant Greninja, and you do have Cramorant, and you are so, so far ahead. It's like basically impossible for Jack to get off a Lost Mine this turn. Technically possible, but based on the hand, you know, you know your opponent's done nothing for three turns pretty yeah. much. It's so, so improbable. Getting the extra damage in play with Greninja is probably fine, but honestly, as Raymond, I would leave this bench space open. Don't yeah. give your opponent any sort of opening. Don't lock anything up here. We'll see if Raymond chooses to keep that path uh, of play going, but that Hisuian Heavy Ball is going to switch out the Radiant Greninja, so at least it's out of the prize cards to be used later on if Raymond wants to. And yep, that Lost Zone at eight cards now. Yep. Just missing the Colrus, and I don't see it in the hand at the moment. Yeah, lots of cards, but no Colrus's experiment yet. Debating benching the Colrus. We'll see if he goes that route. Can or Beach the Radiant Court. Greninja? You yeah, said bench, bench the, the Colrus. <laughs> it's been a long weekend, boo. <laughs> yes, it benching has. Benching the Radiant Greninja, <laughs> probably trying to dig for the Colrus. Yep. yep, Yep. for sure. But Beach Court is going to be the stadium bump here. So retreat cost of basic Pokemon is one colorless less. So that's just going to be a nice free retreat yep. there on that comfy into the Cramorant bench space kept open here for Raymond Long. And it's going to be first uh, oh. to the prize cards here for Raymond as well. Jack does find possibly the best card he could have drawn off the top of the deck. And the that Colrus? is a Colrus experiment. Yes. Nice. So we'll see if it's got to be like the perfect five cards. There are so many switch oh cards in the hand. There's just no Pokemon to move into. So if Jack yeah. can get a couple Comfey, it's reasonable that we could see something happen this turn. And speaking of Comfey's, there's one and an S-Ball 
Yeah, I just, honestly, I'm just shocked, Chip, looking at this board state. We're several turns into this game, and this is just something I've never seen from a Lost Box deck. Normally so, so consistent. Yeah, and so consistent. There's so many cards and outs to things, but Jack Carter is just now stumbling into those. So we have that Colrus's Experiment that's going to bring our Lost Zone on Jack's side up to three here now, and at least one Comfey on the field. We're going to have that uh, Switch Cart bring that Comfey into the active for a Flower selecting first. And this will now be four cards in the Lost Zone, so Jack will be able to now use his own Cramorant to go after Raymond's Cramorant. Of course, 110 is the amount of HP, but also the amount of damage that yeah. you're able to use with Spit Innocently and Nest Ball. I totally expect to see Cramorant coming down now. Yep, we're going to have some more cram on cram action here, Chip. We see it very often in this mirror match, and yep, no surprise there. Cramorant joining the field here for Jack Carter. And we're going to see how else Jack can progress this turn or if that's going to be uh, kind of it. Yeah, Raymond's lack of aggression in those early turns has allowed Jack to very much stay in this game. If Raymond had gone turn two attack with Cramorant or yeah. turn one, but even turn two, it would have put Jack on so much more of a clock. Mm -hmm. Raymond wasn't able to do that. And now things are tied up. Jack is starting to stabilize a little bit. Does have four cards now in that Lost Zone. Able to use that Spit Innocently for free thanks to Lost Provisions. Yep, so Raymond Long first to the prize cards, but Jack Carter not far behind there, taking a prize card here in that turn. And we're back over to Raymond. Going to bench that Radiant Greninja now that that Cramorant is wiped off the field here. So we'll be able to utilize that potentially for some concealed cards here in the turn. And that's what we're going to see first here from Raymond. Draw into two. It's going to be the Echoing Horn. I think a Super Rod is the other and one. And a Super Rod. Going to take a look as well through Jack Carter's discard pile, keep track of the resources on the other side of the field. And there is a Comfey in the discard pile, something that would be pretty strong for Raymond if he can accomplish it, would be attacking with Radiant Greninja here. Bring it up to the active spot, and then you'd be able to attack into Comfey, and then another Comfey that you eventually Echoing Horn out. Wow, yeah, that would be extremely strong here. Lost Zone up to nine now for Raymond Long. Is going to play a super odd, it looks like, putting back Cramorant yeah. in a couple energy. That's what this looks like it's being prepped for. Yeah, just looking through the discard pile to see what is there. And then we are going to see that super rod to shuffle those cards back into the deck. So it's going to be the psychic energy and the water energy and that Pokemon. Looks like Raymond does have the Mirage Gate. Probably going to see a couple energy coming down to Radiant Greninja. If there's a water energy in the hand, we know that that Echoing Horn is already available and... Thanks, of course, to the beach court. This Comfey can move to the bench. Very Gren nice. Greninja will come active, and we will see a two-prize turn, which gets Raymond so much farther ahead yeah. in the prize trade, but also will take the Comfey out of play for Jack. Yeah, that is huge here, Chip. Looks a little get, bit confusing because that Radiant Greninja is upside down, but it's it's not confused here. <laughs> that concealed cards was just yep. used, and it's upside down to signify that the ability was used there. Yep, that's what Raymond's been doing all weekend long in order yeah. to remember that his abilities have been used. I like it. Actually not using the Echoing Horn here. Pretty interesting. Ooh. Just setting up some damage on this Cramorant. Maybe wants to save the Echoing Horn play for a little later in the game. I think cashing in on that as soon as you can is pretty strong. You're just giving your opponent a chance to get Manaphy down to, to limit true. the Greninja ever being able to do that again. So I really would have liked to have seen Raymond just go ahead and cash in. Maybe he's a little worried about Jack playing something like a Roxanne. That is something the Lost Box decks yeah. do play from time to time. Of course, Raymond is playing a copy of his own Roxanne. So maybe playing around that a little bit. That's the only thing I could think of is why Raymond wouldn't want to take that KO. Yeah, I guess choosing to go a different route here, just put that damage onto the Cramorant, which of course does not take the knockout. We're over on Jack's side. We've already used concealed cards on that Radiant Greninja, and we're going into a Colrus's Experiment now, making a choice, and there's a lot of energy drawn uh, into that Colrus's Experiment. A lot of energy and a Sableye, the ever-important oh. piece of this matchup. Of course, Jack is still a little far away from getting to the 10 in the Lost Zone necessary yeah. to utilize it. But Manaphy is the other card, too, and oh. you 
Really don't feel like you can afford to get rid of that. Yeah, you have to take the mana fee for sure. I mean, well, I don't know. A lot of the cards are being shuffled around there for it's Jack Carter. Call. It is an extremely tough call here. Every single resource counts in these Lost Box games. And Jack Carter is having to make this difficult decision here. But we'll have to see what he chooses to put into the Lost Zone here, bringing it up another two cards. Yeah, I think you do have to get rid of the Sableye. Man Manaphy just really needs to be kept around, especially since your opponent kind of has this damage just waiting in play on the Cramorant. Yeah. Of course, they can take it out with a Sableye at some point, but you really want to punish the fact that Raymond's trying to not take that extra prize mm -hmm. at the turn that he could have. Absolutely. We're going to see the escape rope here now from Jack. Raymond Long going to send up a Comfey here, and of course... The only Pokemon there is that Radiant Greninja for Jack. And it will be a retreat and a hit with Cramorant. Jack now going down to just two prizes. I do like something that Jack is doing here, trying to limit the amount of low HP Pokemon put into play. Jack mm -hmm. obviously could have put down a Comfey, could have used Flower Selecting. There's one in the hand, so, you know, Escape Rope could have sent that up. Use Flower yep. Selecting, Beach Court, Free Retreat. We'd have been in the same spot. But a Comfey being in play is an easy target for the Sableye to chase after. Yep, not wanting to put those liabilities down. We are tied up here in the prize cards at four for each of our players, but we're on Raymond Long's side of the field now. We have our first flower selecting. Looks like it's a difficult decision here because things are being measured up in the discard pile. Yeah, the one card I definitely saw was the Pidgeot V, the single Pokemon V that Raymond plays in the list alongside two Forest Sealstone, and I think the other card is the Mirage Gate. So debating if it's okay to lose a Mirage Gate in order to keep your Pidgeot so you can use Forest Seal Stone. Yeah. Looks like Raymond doesn't think it's worth it. Does decide to bitch, ditch that Pokemon V. Yep, ditched into the discard pile here. Sableye is down on the fields now as well with that Psychic Energy attached. That means Sableye is online here with that Lost Mind to get some damage counters out. Going to be able to take out the Cramorant and stack up the damage onto the damage. Radiant Greninja. Yeah. And we'll see if Raymond does decide to take the knockout on the Cramorant. And it actually looks like he is not. He is scared of Roxanne. I th that's, I think that has to be what be Raymond it. is worried about here. That's got to be it, Chip. So just the damage being placed onto that Radiant Greninja. Jack Carter now able to... Uh, do whatever he wants with this turn, but what is the hand looking like? I mean, there's a ton of cards in the hand for Jack, but where does he go from here, Chip? Well, you definitely need to deal with the Sableye. With six cards in the Lost Zone, it is technically possible to get to 10 here. Of course, Colrus is going to boost two more, and then yeah. if you find a Lost Vacuum and a Tool, which we do see right there, he could get to 10 and then utilize his own Sableye this turn with Lost Mine. And there's another way you can kind of punish your opponent for leaving too much damage in play, and that's if you play a bunch of switching cards in a turn. We see one in the Lost Zone. I think there's one in the discard pile, so there should be still be a couple switch cards hanging around that could get some healing going. A surprisingly relevant card, the healing factor of yeah, switch true. cards in the mirror match. Yep, Nest Ball being played here. Going to bring out a Raikou V onto the bench. And this is another thing you can do for this version of the Lost Box deck. There's really only one card that Raymond has that can deal with Raikou right away, and that is the Zamazenta. So the Zamazenta can retaliate, take a knockout on the Raikou as just a single prize Pokemon. But other than that, Raikou can get you a little extra card draw. It's got a decent amount of HP, and it can pretty easily deal with the Sableye, so it might stick around for a couple turns. Yeah, I think we saw that Zamazenta in the prize cards initially for Raymond Long, but... Um, we did, yeah. Yeah, actually, it's still in there, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah. From the way the cards were drawn. But, yeah, we'll see how this comes into play here. Well, you're going to see the concealed cards drawing a couple more here. Sableye and a Forest Seal Stone. That unlocks a lot of potential here for yep. Jack. Just taking account here of that loss zone. Eight cards there for now for Jack Carter. So many cards yeah, in the somehow hand. has managed to just get so many cards still into this hand, yes. even after such a poor and suboptimal start, to be honest. 
Yeah, that's what this deck is meant to do. Just stack tons and tons of cards into the hand from both sides of the field. We, er, field. we are going to see this for Sealstone here now from Jack Carter, allowing him to search out any card after the flip of that V-Star marker on the board. Of course, you can only use one V-Star per game. This is going to be the turn it's used for Jack Carter. So does choose to grab, it looks like is debating Switch Cart and Lost Vacuum. So Lost Vacuum would allow you get to 10 cards in the Lost Zone. Right now this turn we could see a Sableye. Switch Cart would allow you to maybe heal a couple of these Pokemon, and it looks like Switch Cart will be the choice. Going to start healing the damage up here for Jack Carter. As you said, Chip, all of this uh, damage being added and being subtracted comes into play here because there's so much math happening from both of these players once the Sableyes start flying around. Yeah, somehow, even with this pretty poor setup, Jack has just got so few cards left in the deck. He's really found a way to claw back in this game, and it's still anyone's opportunity to take game number one here, Boo. Was that just a Mirage Gate for the Lightning Energy on the Raikou? Yeah, just the gotcha. one. There was no other Energy cards remaining in the deck. None remaining in the deck here. Switch cart's going to be played now. Going to heal that damage off of the Cramorant. Go into that Radiant Greninja. And, and we're going to yeah. see the double Switch cart again to heal even more damage now into that Raikou V. Yep, taking 60 damage out of play gives Raymond a lot less to work with. Fleet-footed, of course. Can't yep. forget it. Get yourself one <laughs> extra card. One thing to note, though, Jack here is going to be going down to just three prizes remaining, which means Raymond will be able to play that one of Tech Roxanne if he can find it. If he can find it, indeed. We've been talking about how these decks stack cards into the hands. Let's see if Raymond Long has that card or can potentially get it this turn. Going to start with the Comfey back in the active position here. Top deck was a Mirage Gate for Raymond Long. And does have that Roxanne hiding out in the Ooh. hand. Really could be a devastating play here to see Raymond go for the Roxanne, put Jack to just two cards, but wouldn't be able to take a knockout on the Raikou. I think you would, I guess you would want to try to do that all in a turn that you're taking a little bit more of a threat off the yeah. board. We know that it's not possible because Raymond has the Zamazenta and the Hisuian Heavy Ball in the prizes. Yep, unfortunately. Yeah, I think that because the Hisuian Heavy Ball took the Radiant Greninja. Right, right. Yeah, so already in there. Nest Ball going to be played here from Raymond Long. It's so hard to tell, like, what is the hand versus the discard pile in the deck? Because they're, like, and all the same. And the Lost Zone, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> There's so many cards here. Yeah, no no switching of the hands or the Lost Zone or anything <laughs> like that. Let's keep it all in order. It is yes. easy to get those things mixed up, though. <laughs> oh, yes, very easily uh, done indeed. Yeah. So Raymond Long going to play that Nest Ball, but I don't think anything was searched out. They're just going to fail the search and has to shuffle up after that Nest Ball. Yeah, choosing to get nothing, maybe just getting rid of the Nest Ball before a potential Roxanne comes mm -hmm. out. Of course, Greninja could still come up and take a knockout on the two Pokemon down here on the bench. Mm -hmm. Super Rod is going to put a couple energy back, most likely, and I assume the Sableye. Yep, extremely important card here for Raymond. Oh, choosing to uh, put that water instead of that metal energy back into the deck here off of the Super Rod. So two energy and a Sableye put back into the deck. Yeah, feeling like I guess it's more likely that the uh, Greninja will be used than the Zamazenta. Mm -hmm. Of course, we don't know when Raymond will be able to pull the Zamazenta yeah. out of the prizes. Exactly. Or Raymond <laughs> doesn't know, at least. Very true. It is a, technically a 50-50 chance to take the... Uh, I mean, yeah. The... Uh, Zamazenta, Zamazenta off the prizes because there's a Hisuian Heavy Ball and a Zamazenta there. Oh, yeah, that's true. So either one of those lets you get it. Yep, we're going to see the full bench now here from Raymond's Long. Now that that Sableye is back onto the field. Yep, it is lost mine time. Yep, Beach Court still in play here. Mirage Gate going to bring more energy out onto the field as well. So I'm curious which way Raymond will go. I think you could Lost Mine to spread some damage. Another thing you could do as well is you could use Radiant Greninja to take out Cramorant and then just put 90 damage on the Raikou V so that it's easier to KO with something like a Lost Mine later on. Yeah. And you know your opponent is down all four switch cards. You can check that resource. There's one in the Lost Zone. There's three in the discard pile. And here it is, Boo. Roxanne. 
Roxanne here, Chip. Insert popular song, right? Uh, Raymond. I Long. was leaving it open for you <laughs> to sing along. <laughs> I don't know if that's allowed here, Chip. <laughs> but we are going to see that Roxanne that we've been talking about. This is the late game card, the one copy, I believe, right? Yes. Raymond's deck of this Roxanne. And it's going to limit Jack down to just two cards. Yeah, this is really the only thing in the deck for Raymond that is could could be considered like a mirror tech, a lost box yeah. tech. It's probably more so just because it's solid draw at the very end of the game, which is something that Kyogre kind of just wants. You just want to be able to get a bunch of cards, but yeah. then it also has the added benefit of being a disruption option, and specifically in the mirror match, if your opponent doesn't expect you to play it, you can really, really put them behind. Yep, Jack Carter only able to draw two cards here, whereas Raymond Long draws into six off of that Roxanne. We're seeing Jack take a quick look at the discard pile, what resources have been used here from Raymond's. Yeah, so I think Sableye kind of taking out the Greninja and the Cramorant is mm. probably good. Just put a little bit of extra damage there on the Raikou. Take your two prizes. I think one thing is for sure, you want to get rid of Greninja so that your opponent has just less draw, draw options. Exactly. Yeah. Thinking about where this damage is going to go with the Lost Mine, let's see what he decides. Oh, Whoa. just going to stack it all on the Raikou. 120 here. That's all 12 damage counters being put onto that Raikou V. That means Jack Carter only able to draw into two cards here. Let's see if they can be used at all. Oh, one of them is a Colrus. Nice. That is pretty solid. Colrus's experiments, and that's going to be uh, even more cards here for Jack Carter to get. I don't see any energy there, so... It looks like the Pal Pad, the Clara, Super Rod, Manaphy, one mm -hmm. other card that is pretty uh, easily chosen, was the, the first one that Jack yep. placed face down. And at this point, you know, Greninja's done a lot of work. It's effectively put it has. 180 damage in play twice. So you uh, <laughs> are not going to really see too much value from the Manaphy, but does choose to keep it and actually ditches the Pal Pad and the Clara. I guess more likely Manaphy could be useful than uh, getting back your Sableyes at this point, and you do still have Super Rod hanging around. All right. Here we have Jack Carter just going to uh, retreat out of that Radiant Greninja. Of course, that Beach Court still in play here, uh, using that Fleet Footed off of the Raikou as well to get that additional draw here for the turn. Going to bump the stadium for a Pokey Stop, and we're Pokey Stopping here. Ooh, was about to be three, but Dragonite V is going to go into the discard pile here. But still, two items drawn there for Jack Carter off the Pokey Stop. Yeah, not too bad. Dragonite's actually usually a pretty bad attacker in the Lost Box Mirror because you just put a bunch of damage on your yeah, bench. <laughs> Make you it a little, that, huh, you're doing Sableye's <laughs> job for him. <laughs> true. <laughs> well, that's uh, discarded away and just two nice items added to the hand here for Jack. We're going to see Nest Ball is played, probably searching out a Sableye, putting that down. Maybe another potential target for Raymond to go after. And I think with all this damage set up here, knowing that four switch carts are downed, Raymond probably is just doing everything he can to play yeah. around the potential of Roxanne. And he knows he's so far ahead at this point from board position, from damage in play, yeah. that there's really not much of a downside. He only plays single prize Pokemon. So, I mean, the only way that Jack can really ever punish this is if he went with the Sableye here and right away this turn took out the Manaphy. And I think that's the play that Jack probably has to go for. Normally you want to deal with the Sableye right away whenever it's in play. But if you take out the Manaphy here and potentially threaten your own Radiant Greninja to win the game next turn, force Raymond to find a way to get the Manaphy back, that's probably going to be Jack's best play, best opportunity to win this game. Yep, we'll see if that's what happens here, Chip. It's just an escape rope. Raymond switching into that Comfey here, and Jack bringing up that Sableye that is so crucial to this final game plan, potentially here for Jack Carter. And we'll see the Lost Mine damage. Where does Jack go with this? Okay, looks like he's spreading uh. the damage out. Four onto the Comfey, four onto the Manaphy, has four more to play with. Oh. Going to just do you another four onto the other Comfey. Kind of a common spread you see on these yeah. 70 HP Pokemon, putting four, 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 so that all of them are pretty unlikely to be able to be switch cart healed. Yeah, that's true. 
There is healing potential here. Uh, and even if they do heal down to just 10 damage, that's yeah. still 60 damage uh, or 60 damage away from being KO'd. One damage counter remains. Oh my goodness! Which can help you. You know, even if they switch cart two 70 HP Pokemon. Is you can still have enough damage in play yes. to KO two of them, yeah. Chip, I'll tell you what, that is way <laughs> too much math for me. <laughs> That's why I do not play this deck. <laughs> Just the life of a lost box player. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So much going on mentally uh, when you're playing and piloting this deck for both of our players. But, yep, we are going to see that even spread of damage from Jack Carter. Of course, we're on to Raymond Long's turn. Now, a Colrus's experiment was played, and that is what is currently being debated here from Raymond. Does choose to ditch a Mirage Gate, obviously one of the more powerful cards, but at this point, I think Raymond is kind of set up just being able to try to go with Sableye turn after turn. You don't really need Mirage Gate so much if you just need to attach one energy. Yeah, single energy onto that Sableye. You're already putting so much work into getting 10 cards in the Lost Zone. It's a easy energy requirement there. Lots of cards to work with here for Raymond Long. And even more on this flower selecting. Easy choice. Battle VIP pass. Going to the Lost Zone um, and Switch Cart going into the hand. Escape Rope now being played. What does Jack Carter promote? Pretty much anything could be KO'd relatively easily. Yeah, Ryko V being promoted here for Jack Carter. We're going to see another flower selecting now from Raymond Long. Yeah, got to be careful. Don't run out of cards. Of yeah, course, Raymond has slim. several cards that put cards back into the deck. You know, Super Odd being one of them lets you shuffle back three in any combination of Pokemon and energy. So that is something that's still alive. Of course, Pidgeot V is another card that Raymond plays. I guess I, we should remember that Pidgeot V was put yeah. to the Lost Zone earlier on. We are going to see that switch card to heal up that Comfey once again and that Manaphy. Just taking as much damage out of play as possible. And it's lost mine time once again. And I feel like as Raymond, you should be at a point now where even if you think your opponent plays Roxanne still, yeah. your board is set up decently enough that you can start to take prizes. Yeah. I don't want to say it too soon because <laughs> yeah, it's happened twice already. Too. Raymond has surprised <laughs> me a couple times. Well, let's see what he does. Ooh. Echoing Horn or, yeah. is going to bring that Dragonite V into play. Are we going to be surprised again here, Chip? Echoing uh, looks Horn. Looks like it. <laughs> bringing out the Dragonite V. Yeah, just wants to... I think what Raymond is going for here is just a board wipe play, right? Uh -huh. uh, I mean, it looks cooler for sure. It definitely does. And there's really not much of a downside as to why you couldn't do this. Put everything into range where you can, next turn, you just have to put damage counters on the Cramorant, the Radiant Greninja, and yeah. the Raikou. All you have to do is be able to find a Sableye, play around the Roxanne, and then you can take all four prizes in one turn. There really is no downside to this. Because you know your opponent, this is like using the fact that you're, you know your opponent is out of healing options since four switch cards are down. Gotcha. So just because of this current board state is why we're seeing this strategy here yep. from Raymond Long, uh, something that maybe we wouldn't have seen in other scenarios here in this matchup. But Jack Carter going to do everything possible. Looks like just taking a look through that loss zone over on Raymond's side of the field before making any decisions here with this turn. But now where does Jack Carter go from here, Chip? You definitely have to knock out this active Sableye. Yep. And you got to just cross your fingers that somehow your opponent misstepped something along the way, doesn't have access to Sableye or energy for whatever reason, and you can find a way to close it out. Hope for the best. That's going to be a pokey stop for three item cards there for Jack Carter, something that he has done several times on our <laughs> stream now, and once again doing it there. Yeah, pretty nice. Anytime you poke a stop for three items, it's effectively a stadium that just lets you draw three cards, which is yeah. pretty good, if you ask me. Pretty good indeed. We're going to see some recovery here from Jack Carter, getting those energy back out of the discard pile with the Super Rod. And they're going to be shuffled back into the deck. Yep, just putting three energy cards back in. Something to work for. Jack could go mm -hmm. maybe for the, uh, the honorable play of trying to Dragonite V this turn and... KO his own Pokemon, go out on his own terms, right? 
Uh, it's unfortunately, though, it doesn't quite work. Radiant Greninja has uh, 100 damage on it, not 110. That would also be wild to see here. <laughs> I don't think we're going to see that here in the finals now. <laughs> no, but we're just going to see that retreat of the Raikou V into this Lost Mine of Jack Carter's own to spread this damage out. And another two prize cards now being taken from Jack yeah, Carter. Jack has set the game up to be able to win on the next turn. But let's see if Raymond Long has the pieces to pull off the Sableye attack. And lost mine for four prize cards. Super Rod is being played, putting it back into the deck. And I already see a Psychic Energy in hand. Yup, this is the play we've been waiting for. Oh, we didn't get to see it fully carried out there, but Raymond Long taking a four prize card knockout here to win game one in this set in our finals of Peoria Regionals. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, the fact that that, that, game, that game took a long time, and let's remember how that game started for Jack Carter, right? Yeah. I mean, I thought the game was going to be over on turn three. And <laughs> That's true, I did drug too. out, we got to this point, it just went for such a long time and Raymond was able to come out on top. And Jack is the one who I would favor slightly in this matchup. He's got the Clara and the Palpat, really just two key cards, but it turns out that the Roxanne for Raymond maybe helped him out a little bit more than we would have expected. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's see what Jack Carter, I don't want to speak too soon, but hopefully let's see what Jack can do with a favorable startup here going into game two. As you said, maybe favored a little bit in this matchup. So we'll see if the, the tables can turn here. But as we can see, so much damage being lined up here by Raymond Long. Yeah, Raymond making sure that he's leaving enough damage on that Raikou that it doesn't get KO'd, that it's hanging around with just a little bit of HP so that on this final turn, this game-winning play could happen. Nest Ball for Sableye, attach the energy, retreat, and there we go. Take all of those knockouts here and all four prize cards for the win from Raymond Long. Uh, yeah, that was a bit of a surprising uh, turnout of our game one, Chip. But as you said, I mean, that that start was wild for Jack Carter. I mean, essentially two useless turns in the beginning stages right. of the match. So I think uh, I didn't get a too big of a peek at the hand from Jack Carter, but I know there's at least a Sableye in the active position. Cool. Sableye is kind of one of the more annoying starters, to be honest. And I'm curious to see here if Jack chose to go first or oh. second. Oh no. Looking at these prizes, what do you see? I see a lot of Pokemon oh, here on Jack Cramorant. Carter's side, including that one of Cramorant. And as we said, in this matchup, it's sort of a race to damage, a race to the prize cards for both of these players. So that Cramorant being in the prize card is very awkward because that is your initial uh, kind of early game attacker a lot of times in this matchup. But here we go, kicking off our game two between these players in our Masters Finals here in Peoria. It's going to be starting over on Raymond Long's side. So Jack did choose to go second here. Of course, you get to choose after losing game one if you want to go first or second in game two. And Jack has chosen to go second. This is definitely a point of contention amongst Lost Box players. There's kind of two schools of thought. If you go first, you're more likely to be the first person to attack with Sableye. But if you yeah. go second, you have the opportunity to attack turn one with Cramorant and get ahead in the prize oh, trade no right away. Tip. And as we saw in the prize cards for Jack Carter, there was that one copy of Cream Rants. Now, Jack does play his Heavy, heavy Ball. Heavy ball and There's possibilities. Has those Pokemon V, has those four Seal Stones. So there is a decent amount of possibility uh -oh. that we could still see the Cream Rant attack, but. <laughs> We'll see how these prize cards get laid out here for I Raymond. was so scared for a second chip. I was like, wait, did Raymond Long not put out prize cards? But they're just being <laughs> reshuffled here for yeah. that Hisuian heavy ball on Raymond Long's side. Yeah, a couple energy cards in the prizes for Raymond, but nothing really too, too bad. Flower selecting now. I think one of those cards was Radiant Greninja. All right, well, if it's the Radiant Greninja, it's going to the hand here yep. off that flower, selecting Psychic Energy going into the Lost Zone. Definitely something Raymond wants to keep track of. We're going to see the Pokey stop, Ooh. but just one card here, a Comfey and a Sableye going pretty, into the discard pile. Pretty useless card to get here at this point. Yeah. Super Rod is great at the end of the game. Not very strong in the beginning. You just use the Super Rod now to shuffle those Pokemon <laughs> back in, right? <laughs> We're the combos are unbelievable. <laughs> Three cards now in the last zone here for Raymond. Radiant Greninja going to join the field here. 
Does choose the Lost Vacuum right away. I really like this decision. Pokestop can be so strong for any Lost Box deck yeah. on turn one. Gives you so much dig for the Battle VIP pass, for the Nest Ball. Use that Lost Vacuum. Get it out of there. Your opponent doesn't get to utilize it. And, of course, you fuel your own Lost Zone. Very nice indeed. Jack Carter, first turn for Jack, which means Battle VIP Pass is online here. Going to get two Pokemon onto the field. And first off, looking through uh, what is in the prize cards and going to realize pretty quickly uh, that there's quite a few Pokemon in there. Yeah, the Cramorant being in there is definitely the one that's going to stand out on this first search. Yep. Of course, you want to check your energy cards as well. I do have to say, it is nice to see at least that already things are starting a little bit better for Jack Carter with that <laughs> yes. Battle VIP pass. A little bit better indeed. I mean, anything's better than just a uh, draw pass, I would say, Chip, for sure. So Battle VIP pass. Going to get some Pokemon out here. Hopefully get some cards into the hand after some switching effects, which we already see in the hand. Multiple switch cards there. Going to go in with a Nest Ball as well as that Battle VIP triple pass. Triple Comfy. Yeah, Triple Comfy. Definitely much better start here for Jack Carter on the initial turn of this game on this side. Of course, going second, so you still have the ability to play a supporter as well. Always looking for that Colrus's experiment to line up your hand even more with cards, but we'll see if that is something Jack Carter can do this turn. Jack's hand is honestly super good. There's switch cards and come phase, of course, in play. There's a Colrus oh, wow. experiment in the hand as well, a Pokestop even. Oh my goodness. And you, this is how <laughs> you know right here that Jack's hand is really good. Colrus's experiment in the lost zone immediately. You know he's got something cooking over there. Yeah, Colrus's experiment going to the lost zone uh, and the switch cart going to the hand off of that first flower selecting. We're also going to see a Pokestop and a Super Rod and, from going to the lost zone as well. And did you see what Jack found? A pretty important yeah. card here, that Hisuian Heavy Ball. Oh, absolutely and amazing. honestly, Jack might have a strong enough hand where you leave the Cramorant in the prizes and you go get Radiant Greninja. That Ooh. is a possibility here. We could see Radiant Greninja targeting down two low HP Pokemon in order to get two prize cards on turn one. Ho, ho, ho. We'll see if he can pull it off. Let's see which Pokemon he grabs here off the heavy ball. He's playing it right now. This game, too, already turning out to be extremely exciting, but it's going to be the safe route here, that Cramorant uh, coming out of the prize cards. Yeah, definitely the more reasonable play. It would have been more exciting, of course, <laughs> to see the Radiant Greninja on turn one. But this is really all you need. Raymond yeah. just has one Comfey in play, and that's the main thing you care about oh. KOing. This Sableye is not going to be doing anything next turn for Raymond. Mm -hmm. Take out this Comfey and just get ahead in the game. Yep, get ahead in the game. Limit your opponent from that extra draw there from the flower selecting. And, of course, stacking those cards into the loss zone. First to the prize cards for Jack Carter. We're over to Raymond's side of the field, promoting that Radiant Greninja first off here into the active position. What's the hand looking like, Chip? He's keeping it a little hidden from me. I do see that Zamazenta. It's kind of the more unique card that Raymond plays, a strong attacker into opposing two prize decks. It is decent in the Lost Box matchup, but looks like that's wow. all Raymond has. Bench Zamazenta and pass. Not a single card added into the Lost Zone. No energy at all. No concealed cards there from Raymond Long. Just the Zamazenta and over to Jack Carter, who has another Colrus's experiment, finding another Colrus's experiment. Yeah, that's all four Colrus found in the first couple of turns. Of course, yeah. one in the discard, one in play, and one in the lost zone. And I would say it probably makes sense that Jack was a little more willing to let go of that first Colrus's experiment into the Lost Zone because he does play the Pow Pad, a way to get a couple Colrus back so that even if he gets Roxanne later in the game, he'll be able to get those pieces. Here we go, Pokestop, three he, item cards. He's done it again Massive. multiple times on our stream and just running it back with this Pokestop. Jack Carter is a Pogo gamer indeed. <laughs> we have the escape rope here. Zamazenta being brought up from Raymond Long's side of the field and Akumfe going to uh, pop up with this flower selecting as well, bringing our loss zone now up to seven. Mirage Gate seven. Mirage, active. Mirage Gate is absolutely active. My question here, though, is can we get to ten? Yes. And I think we probably can. Switch cart into this other comfy. That'll add one more, put you to eight, and then now you just need Lost Vacuum in order to Ooh. get rid of your own stadium card. That puts you to ten. We're going to see a turn 
one Cramorant from Jack, and a turn two Sableye. Wow, yeah, that is exactly how you want this deck to function indeed. Super Rod joining the Lost Zone here, adding us up to eight now for Jack. That is eight. Lost Vacuum is going to be able to make it happen. Here comes the Manaphy solid card to get in play. Yeah, definitely. I see a couple two cards, and boo, I already see it. Lost Ooh. Vacuum is in the hand. <laughs> We're going to do this Mirage Gate first here for Jack Carter, but wow, things are lining up beautifully here for Jack. Everything you want to see, especially after that game one. Jack is having a turn of luck. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, Raymond is the one who's kind of experiencing what Jack experienced yeah, in game number one at this point. Had a little better of a turn one, but just really has not been able to get anything going. Playing this Lost Vacuum is going to do a few things. Of course, gets you to 10 cards in the Lost Zone, but maybe more importantly, takes the Pokestop out, out of, play, of play so your opponent isn't able to utilize it. Yep, no pokey stop to save Raymond's long as we've seen it on Jack Carter's side. Sableye in the active now. We're going to spread this damage out from Jack Carter here. Ten cards in the Lost Zone. Yeah, we'll see where this damage goes. It's actually just going to be the <laughs> 120 on the Radiant Greninja. Yep, Sableye's not a threat. You know what? Makes sense to me. Any, you know, Maybe taking a little book, out, a page out of Raymond's yeah. book, I should say, right? looking at this opportunity to just try to spread the damage. And now that you know as Jack that Raymond does indeed play Roxanne, you want yep. to do what you can to play around it. I love how Raymond Long took the uh, the dice from the what was keeping track of the Lost Zone and just put it on <laughs> the Doesn't matter Raymond. anymore. <laughs> yeah, we're at 10. These dice could be reutilized here on the field. So Raymond Long playing that escape rope. Ooh. Comfe going to join us on Jack Carter's side. And that's a pass? Escape rope and pass. Oh, Attach no. to the active for Jack. Going to Sheesh. use now that flower selecting, sending a battle VIP pass. And it's just going to be a promotion of the Sableye. Oh. Yeah, here we go, and it's going to be 120 on Zamazenta. How do you recover from here, Chip? Jack Carter absolutely running away with this game, too. Wow, this is awful for Raymond. What was the top deck? Anything we it can work with. It was a switch cart, uh, which does technically mean Raymond doesn't immediately lose <laughs> okay. as it stands with these Pokemon in play. You know, eight damage counters on the Sableye, one on Zamazenta, one on Radiant Greninja. That would be enough to close out the game. Yeah. But the Switch Cart does add a little bit more healing, and that would put Jack just 10 HP, 10 damage away from winning the game with Sableye. So, uh, yeah, Raymond would technically be still in it. Technically still in it, but uh, not looking good still, Tip. That is for sure. Just going to be that escape rope here for Raymond. And yeah, things are just looking very grim over here on the left side of the field. On the right side, though, Jack Carter, very happy, I'm sure, to be in this incredibly strong position here. Yeah, this is kind of what you hope to see in the finals from time to time. You know, it's a little unfortunate. You usually want to have good, solid, competitive games, but... Yeah. In this spot, you know, with so much on the line, $10,000 to first place, you absolutely take it whenever your opponent has a rough game. Yep, we and have. Jack, of course, was on the other side of it last time. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. We've upped everything here for our competitors. And, yeah, $10,000 on the line between these players, as well as an auto invite into our world championship at the end of the season. And Jack Carter's getting one <laughs> step closer to that. And Jack Carter also says, I'm not getting Roxanne. <laughs> We're <laughs> retreating into the Cramorant, and we are taking out that Sableye, going down to just two prize cards remaining. And let's see what you can do, Raymond Long. Let's see what Raymond can do indeed. Can he use concealed cards to That's kick it. off the turn? That's it. The game's over. Yeah, Raymond has nothing. Oh. We're going to game three, boo. Going to game three in our finals here in Peoria, Illinois. Incredible play in both of our games from our players. Unfortunately, though, both of uh, the players on the opposing side didn't really have too much of a setup to work with there. Although I will say Jack Carter definitely swung back in that game won and made it extremely close. For Raymond Long in that game too, there was just nothing to work with, Chip. There really wasn't. And Jack wisely playing around the potential of the Roxanne, doesn't want to give Raymond yeah. any sort of comeback potential in this game. Just took the knockout with Cramorant here when other people maybe would have been tempted, myself included, to just yes. knock out that Radiant Greninja, <laughs> take away the draw power.
What Raymond's one chance was this concealed cards. Could he find a basic Pokemon or a Nest Ball? And no, Nothing. he could not. Nothing at all. Just going to have to scoop things up for Jack Carter to tie things up here. One to one in our finals. All right, Chip, here's the question. How do you think this is going to pan out? Not really sure. And it's going <laughs> to depend on if Raymond is the one that wants to choose to go True. first or second here. I will say Raymond's list is probably a little bit less consistent as far as pulling off the turn one Cramorant attack. So really, honestly, as Raymond, you may want to choose to go first to try to give yourself the best chance to maybe pull off a Greninja play on turn number two. Or well. do you just have to hope to... Be fortunate enough to get that first attack off when you are the one going second. Let's see what Raymond chooses. Well, I'm pretty sure from what Jack Carter just said, um, he was saying, I'm first, I'm going first. And I think Raymond Long said yes. So yeah. I think Jack gotcha. Carter might be going first here. We'll have to confirm that once the game starts. But, but before we can even start this game, we have to resolve this mulligan. Jack Carter has won mulligan so far, which means until Jack can get a basic Pokemon in play here, Raymond Long is going to be drawing cards for each time Jack has to shuffle up to get that yeah. basic. And when you're going first in the Lost Box Mirror, the last thing you want to do is give your opponent more mulligans, more cards to work with, because that just makes it all the more likely that they'll be able yeah, to pull off true. the turn one Cramorant's attack. That is very true. Another, Another mulligan. Another one. Oh, just as we spoke of it, Chip, that's going to be two mulligans now for Jack Carter, which means Raymond's going to have two extra draws here in this next game coming up. Could that be the difference to turn things into a win potentially here for Raymond Long? Will Raymond be another Canadian player here to take down a regional championship with Lost Box Kyogre? Yeah, it would be two in a row. We'll see if Raymond can make it happen. And with a 60 card Pokemon TCG deck, every single extra card you get to draw is just a little bit higher of a percentage. Yeah. You're gonna be able to do what you want. So if what you want to do is pull off the turn one Cramorant attack, every single time you get one extra mulligan card, mm -hmm. it just boosts that chance a little bit more. Yeah, definitely some nerves, I'm sure, heading into this game. Everything has come down to this. It's game three between these players. After the end of this game, we're going to have our champion here. Will it be Jack Carter or is it going to be Raymond Long? Let's take a look at these prize cards. Yeah, we see a couple of switch cards for Jack. That's less than ideal. Raymond's Roxanne is not great either. Pidgeot V, the one single Pokemon V in the prizes in addition. That could be bad if you need to rely on that Forest Seal Stone. And for Jack, Pokestop is finally starting to fail him. I mean, it's turn one, right? So <laughs> there's no way that could have been three items, right? That would have been wild to see. But Jack Carter going to bench this Dragonite V to attach the Forest Seal Stone and use it immediately, uh, opting to um, get the board state set up as much as possible here. So going to select a single card, any card from the deck off of this Forest Seal Stone. Got any predictions here, Boo? <laughs> Gotta be that. Yes. Battle, Battle VIP, VIP Pass. pass. Yep. I was like, are we gonna say at the same time, Tim? Sure Battle enough. VIP Pass coming into play here to get these Pokemon out onto the field for Jack. Valuing the initial startup. Yep. We've seen how important that is, especially since Raymond has uh, gotten those extra two cards, as we've talked about, Chip. We'll see if those two cards were beneficial here for Raymond, especially going second. Yeah, it's really the only card worth burning your four Seal Stone for on turn one when you're going first. Is just yep. making sure you can get set up, go with a switch cart play, try to pull off the flower selecting so you can get a few cards in the Lost Zone. Now, if you are the player going first, something you can try to do as the... Lost Box player is put two Pokemon in play that can withstand a hit from Cramorant. Yeah. So something like the Radiant Greninja, sending that to the active spot so that your opponent isn't going to be able to just easily take a prize card. And then maybe something like the Dragonite here also could eat up a hit. Yeah, but looks like there was um, a little bit of clarification there of something, but we're on this flower selecting currently here for Jack Carter. Choosing between two cards, it's going to be the Mirage Gate going into the Lost Zone as our first card for that Psychic Energy going into the hand. And Escape Rope will allow another Flower Selecting to be utilized. Also still has an Energy card in hand, wants oh. to hang on to it in case maybe Radiant Greninja is found. Speaking of which, Nest Ball can fetch it out. 
Nesvold can fetch it out, but the Sableye would have to go into the Lost Zone for Jack Carter. So making that decision now, do I want the Sableye to stick around oh. or that Nest Ball? Sableye is going to go into the hand, Nest Ball into the Lost Zone. Two cards now in the Lost Zone here for Jack Carter to start things off. Energy attached to that Comfey, and we're over to Raymond Long. Pokestop still in play. Yeah. Could uh, see some utilization here from Raymond to get into even more cards. And here we go, Battle VIP pass for Raymond Long on the left side of our field already to start off this turn for Raymond. Yep, going to be really solid. Of course, Raymond having extra cards to work with from those mulligans. The question is going to be, can he pull off the turn one Cramorant attack? Yeah. That is the question indeed. I would hope that with how many uh, cards are in the hand, hopefully we can see a lot happen this turn for Raymond for this turn to get the lead on the prize cards leading this game in total. We'll have to see, but of course, Raymond's gonna keep track of everything that's in the prize cards here after taking a first look through the deck. No Pokemon have come out yet. Just keep a track of resources. A ton of energy cards in that hand right now for Raymond's long. I do think I saw uh -oh. Comfey as well. Uh, not too bad to have too many energy cards. This list does play, you know, a bit more than a traditional Lost Box list. Usually we're used to seeing like eight or nine, something like that, which yeah. of course on Jack's side we do see the eight. All the way up to 11 when you're playing Kyogre. That's what you kind of have to do. Yeah, lots of energy there, but I guess more energy that are in the hand, potentially more items off Pokestop. We'll have to see. Comfey <laughs> <laughs> uh, going to come down here off that Battle VIP pass and still just searching through this deck for Raymond. It's kind of a long initial deck search, but Cramorant's going to be found uh, for that Battle VIP pass. Yeah, everything's on the line at yep. this point. One single game separates either of these players from becoming the regional champion. And from their oh. world's invite from $10,000. And as Raymond Long, you're feeling good playing two VIP pass when yeah. you're going first. Oh, I'm feeling Second, good. Excuse me. I'm feeling good seeing two B uh, Battle VIP pass as well. I mean, you got to think, this is a card that can only be played on your very first turn of the game. So getting to play two is even better here, Raymond. I'm sure very happy to see that. Manaphy going to join the field off of that second Battle VIP pass as well as another Comfey. So lots of Pokemon being established here for Raymond Long. He does find that Comfey, a pair of them in play now. We just need a Colrus. We need a couple of flower selectings. Let's see if Raymond has the pieces to make it happen this turn. No Colrus in the prizes this game. First time yes. in this finals set. He has not prized a Colrus experiment. Yeah, which is great. You want to see that card as much as you possibly can in this game or really any game that you play. It's so pivotal to this deck. So we'll see how Raymond chooses to play the rest of this turn going forward. Going to start with the concealed cards here to draw into two additional cards. You didn't quite catch what they were. I think one may have been a Looks nest like some, ball. Some items for sure. Yeah. Could have actually even been the Kyogre. What? <laughs> I thought I saw items. <laughs> Maybe a Pokemon. I don't know. We'll have yeah. to see. Raymond is definitely keeping the <laughs> hand close to, to the chest here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely one of the questions to keep in mind is when is the optimal time to use the Pokestop this yeah. turn? That is a difficult decision indeed. We're going to see it was the uh, energy attachment onto that Radiant Greninja for the pivot out of the active position. Comfey going to join us there. Now, and a Mirage Gate going to go into the Lost Zone. That is one card here in the Lost Zone. We're trying to get to four for that Cramorant to be online. And this next Flower Selecting is going to bring us up one more. I don't see the Colrus Experiment, though, Boo. Oh, no. I think he's maybe going to miss out here. Oh, oh there it is, <laughs> Chip. the Colrus. There it is, but not in the way you want to see it. It's being discarded off of the Pokestop here from Raymond. No oh, way. Oh, just one card away, and he had another Comfey. No. That is quite sad to see, Chip. It's just going to be the escape rope now for Raymond. And Jack going to have to promote first off of this escape rope. Sheesh. We needed it, but not in that way, Chip. Not in that way, for sure. Looks like Jack is content sending up the Sableye, potentially letting it go down to a Cramorant hit. We see the two cards. One of them was a Forest Seal Stone. That's not going to be useful with your Pidgeot in the prizes. Yeah. Choosing to ditch the Energy Recycler instead, though, keeping this piece around in case energy, uh, the Pidgeot is found later on. 
Yep. Just a pass. No. The whole reason Raymond chose to go second was to try <sighs> to be the first one to attack, and he's unable to make it happen. Pokestop oh now being used on God. Jackson. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, is this about to be three here? But honestly, two items to the hand here for Jack Carter is incredible, as well as a Colrus's experiment, something Raymond wanted so bad on that turn. And Jack Carter's going to get it on this turn. And easy choices here. Battle VIP pass, two of them yep. being chucked into that lost zone, bringing us up to four cards now here for Jack, which means Jack's Cramorant or future Cramorant is online if he chooses to go that way. Yeah, and I wonder if Jack, uh, it would have to be like a double vacuum play, which is pretty hard to do since you've already used for a seal stone. I'm trying to think if he could get to Sableye this turn. It's pretty unlikely. I think it is technically mm. possible. You would need to burn a lot of switch cards, which may not be worth it. You may be content trying to just be able to uh, take that first knockout with Cramorant. Yeah, we'll see, though. Uh, who knows? We're not going to see it until Jack Carter chooses what route to go. Nest Ball going to bring out Manaphy onto the field. Four Pokemon on this bench. One more slot open. Escape Rope going to be played now. Raymond Long easily just bringing up another Comfey into the active, but this is going to allow for Jack to switch into a Comfey as well and get this flower selecting. I think there could definitely be an argument for Raymond to have sent up the Radiant Greninja there, something that can withstand a hit from the potential attacker later on, the Cramorant, yeah. Switch cart now being utilized. That's going to be one less heal option later on. One less heal option down. We'll definitely have to keep track of these cards that are going into both the Lost Zone and the Discard Pile because they come up later in this match in the late game. Raiko V going into the Lost Zone here. Now, one thing that is definitely worth mentioning that Raymond has kind of done to himself, uh, he's bench locked himself. Uh-oh. There's no space for Sableye. So if Jack can get to Sableye pretty quickly and just start attacking, oh, yes. he doesn't mm. have to take a single prize card. He can go through this entire game without taking a single prize card and just spread damage mm. turn after turn after turn with Lost Mine. And then at the very end of the game, place two damage counters on each of these six Pokemon to close out the game. You have to do a little bit of math. Yeah. See if it's a possible. Math, it depends say. on how many switch carts your opponent is down and how quickly they are able to pull off the attack themselves. We'll see what Raymond can do here. Colrus's experiment being started off. Yeah, that is definitely risky. I mean, we talked about that in game one, Chip, how you always want to have that slot open for your Sableye, and that is currently not an option here for Raymond Long. Uh, going into this Colrus's experiment, now deciding what to put into the Lost Zone. Just one turn too late, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're making a tough decision, it looks like, here for Raymond. You're debating what to hang on to. This is going to put him up to five cards in the Lost yep. Zone. Just a couple come phase away from a seven play, potentially. Does lose the Pokestop and Mirage Gate, two pretty strong cards. Wow. Um, I wonder what was kept to put those two into the Lost Zone. At least one other Colrus, it looked like. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Flower and selecting here. Raymond, show us the cards, please. <laughs> yeah, Mirage Gate's <laughs> definitely less valuable in this matchup than it is in something like a, True. you know, Maridon or a Lugia, something like that. You know, you just are a little less strained on finding multiple energy every single turn. You're kind of fine just trying to find one Psychic. So usually in a Lost Box Mirror match, you're only playing like two Mirage Gate a game anyway. It's doing a heavy ball going into the Lost Zone here, bringing us up to six now. Yeah, Hisui and Heavyball could have found that Pidgeot. Of course, True. no bench space to yeah, put it down. There's no space. <laughs> no. It's going to be a uh, retreat here off that Comfey into the Cramorant. Going to take a knockout first to the prize cards on Raymond's side. But again, no space for a Sableye currently. Jack going to start us off with a flower selecting the choices between a lost vacuum and another item card. A super rod, it looked like. Mm -hmm. So... Going to be kind of a tough call. You need your Super Odd to keep getting Sableye back turn after turn after turn. But Jack yeah. does play four Super Odd. So even though one is already in the Lost Zone, I think you can afford to lose another one. And keeping the Lost Vacuum around here does guarantee that you get to seven or ten in the Lost Zone right now. If he has a way to get another Comfey, then this makes sense too. I don't see it just yet. He actually can with the Clara. Okay. Oh, okay. That is kind of an important resource to burn right now, though. Yeah, these cards are going to go straight into the hand here for Jack. 
going to be used to energy and just that comfy going into the hands. But you're right, Chip, that resource is now down. Definitely have to keep track of that. Comfy coming back out here into an escape rope. Raymond's going to bring up a comfy of their own. Let's see what this flower selecting brings us. It's going to be the option between a water energy or a pal pad. But Jack Carter is going to opt to uh, take that pal pad. And that's going to bring us up to 10 cards now in the Lost Zone. I did a quick count here. <laughs> and our Lost Zone is up to 10 officially here, which means Sableye is able to function as long as there's a psychic energy attached as well. And I don't think that's going to be any issue here because we have Mirage Gate from Jack Carter. So I think Jack is just short, I'm trying to do the math here, just short of being able to pull off the play where he just uses Sableye turn after turn after turn and then eventually clears the board. 520 HP on Raymond's side of the field. And oh my gosh. And potentially <laughs> four switch cards. Now, if Raymond has already burned a switch card, that does change things quite a bit if there is the need to... Because if there's 520 HP in play yeah. and then 120 HP that can be healed from switch card, that means you need to do 640 damage before Raymond takes all five prize cards. Gotcha. You need to spread that much damage, and that would take a little over five turns to accomplish. But if there's the need to do 610 damage and there's 12 cards in the Lost Zone, you get closer, it's just still barely over five. So let's see exactly how it's gonna break down. Maybe Jack does need to be a little more aggressive after the prizes and try to cash in on some damage mm. before the switch cart comes into play. Gonna be interesting to see how it plays out, Boo. Yeah, uh, that is a lot of math, and <laughs> I do not envy either of these players, to be honest, having to think about all of that in each of these turns, but looks like Dak Carter is gonna spread out this damage initially here, and uh, that Zamazenta is gonna go into the Lost Zone for Raymond Long um, off of this course's experiment. We'll see how many Healing options are available. Plenty of cards in hand. Lots yeah, to work with. Hands. Yeah. I mean, both what of these players, the? honestly, building up pretty large hands. Not quite there for Jack, as similar <laughs> as it is to Raymond, who is going to draw now with Radiant Greninja. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Drawing into an additional two cards. It feels like there's just everything in the hand here for Raymond. So it's really just up to Raymond, uh, as of now, what route to take from here on out, because it just seems like there's so many cards in hand. Flower selecting. Going to give another option here to Raymond. Yeah, I think that Artisan was in there. I feel like you can get rid of that pretty freely. and most likely only helps your opponent. Looks like Metal Energy is going to go down instead, though. Hmm. Could have been something else, not the Artisan. Yeah, potentially. It's so hard to see these it cards. Is, yeah. So we're keeping track of that loss zone, though. Looks like it's up to nine now here for Raymond. It actually may have been the Beach Court, which is maybe a little better to keep around. Oh, yes. Give yourself that pivot. And especially if you are at nine cards, um, of course, getting to 10 here, not super relevant. Can't get Sableye in play. Yeah, exactly. Just Bench is full currently. This is the, the mission right now for Raymond is put the pressure on, take a knockout with Cramorant every single turn. If Raymond ever misses a knockout, then that gives Jack pretty much the guaranteed win to go with the Sableye play. Mm -hmm. So if there's ever an escape rope played and Jack just pushes up like the Dragonite, you don't really care about the damage on Dragonite. Yeah. Your opponent's not going to be able to bench Sableye to capitalize on that. And then they've missed a knockout, and then you can pull off that Sableye play we were mentioning. That is wild, Chip. So I, I, it seems like what you're saying is that uh, Raymond should have kept that space open for Sableye, <laughs> huh? <laughs> he was really digging for the turn one Cramorant attack. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Digging for it. Did not get there. So sad to see. Jack Carter flying through these cards now here. Lots going into the discard. Lost Zone has already been at 10. We see another energy on that second Sableye. Tons of resources here for Jack Carter already on the fields. And we even have that pivot option on that come phase. So going to jump right out of the active into a Sableye here for Jack and into this Lost Mine. Let's see where this damage goes, Chip. Probably another 40 onto this Comfey, and then you've got 80 more to work with. Actually going to be 60 onto this Comfey, and 60 onto the Radiant Greninja. Draw for turn now for Raymond. Draw for turn into that giant stack uh, that is the hand here for Raymond. Looks like going to take a glance at the discard pile here on Jack Carter's side. 
keeping track of all of these resources that Jack has already used, kind of trying to map out here what Jack has gone through. I mean, you got to think you're, you're keeping track of your own resources yep. and your loss zone and your opponent's resources and their loss zone. Yep. It's a lot. <laughs> and all this math, Chip, I can't yep. handle it. Yep. Uh, there's a lot going on. A lot at play, a lot at stake as well for these players. I mean, so much on the line, high pressure, yeah. and you're trying to do all this math as well. I feel like I'm t taking the SAT again. <laughs> Very true, but honestly, it's not surprising to see both of these the, uh, these decks in the finals here because you got to think your skill level has to be pretty high here to bring this deck and Absolutely. bring it all the way into the finals. Yeah, both of these decks really difficult to play, especially the Very Kyogre difficult. builds. There's so much at play with the Kyogre version of the deck specifically. And Jack really does have some interesting and unique cards in the list. That Echoing Horn we've mentioned yeah. has the Palpad, the Clara, all those things thing, uh, that are things that can be useful here in this matchup. Clara has been utilized. I think as Jack, you definitely are going to try to find that pal pad pretty soon. You want to get that piece back. A super odd has gone down to the discard pile, one in the lost zone as uh, well. The pal pad, I think, is already in hand for Jack. Yeah, that, would I remember. that would be yeah, good. That would be good. I'm pretty sure it's in the hand already. Um, so, yeah, that is definitely good indeed. I mean, just look at these board states right now, Chip. So much damage over here on the left side, Raymond Long side of the field. And that is not what you want to be looking at, especially this is our third game. This is the last game we're going to see here in Peoria. Um, has there been a... I don't... I haven't even used this one. Yeah, I don't think there's been a concealed cards. This is Didn't kind of... rotate. Yeah. yeah, this is one back. of the issues with uh, turning your Pokemon upside down, I think, potentially to signify that their ability has been used. you got to remember to flip them back after your turn's <laughs> yeah, over. True. Very true indeed. So that's going to be the concealed cards here from Raymond Long. The hand's much bigger than the deck even is at this point for Raymond. 240 damage on Raymond Long's side of the field. That means there's 280 HP remaining. So we're a few turns Ooh. away from Sableye potentially sweeping. Of course, switch cart, absolutely something Raymond wants to keep in mind. Energy yeah. Recycler being played. A bunch of energy cards going back into the deck. All right. So those are out of the discard pile, going to be shuffled back in here. Out of some more cards into the deck because it was getting pretty slim there, but uh, keeping track of all these resources. Mirage Gate going to at least accelerate two energy. I guess it could be one, but two energy out onto the field here for Raymond Long. Yeah, the attachment to the active Cramorant probably signifies a manual retreat into something and then a switch cart, I would have to guess. I mean, you could manually power up Spit innocently. It's a, <laughs> but why? a little unnecessary. It, does it mean you do double damage, lost <laughs> provisions, and the energy attached? Do you get to attack twice? I guess we've never seen that happen, huh, Tim? Not going to happen today, though. Retreating the energy off, sending up the Comfey. We'll be able to utilize Flower Selecting, and then also likely heal this Pokemon with a Switch Cart. Yep, the, these are the cards we've been talking about here to get some of that damage off the field for, for Lame, Raymond Long. Another card into the Lost Zone. And here's that switch cart, healing up that Comfey into another Comfey. Another flower selecting as well into an additional two cards. Didn't get to see what either of them were. You think we're going to see another switch cart? Another one. <laughs> sure enough. Here we go. Some more healing here of the board state from Raymond. Another flower selecting. It's going to be a water energy and another card. Yep, just trying to get as much healing going as possible using these switch cards, trying to deny this play from Jack Carter. Yeah, all the pressure is on, and I'm sure Raymond is feeling it in this moment for yes. sure. Needs to just ensure he can continue to attack turn after turn after turn. Just a little too much HP hanging around. More Checking cards the cards in hand. hand. Raymond has taken a couple prize cards at this point. Yeah. If he takes another one this turn, he will be getting Roxanne, but <laughs> if, or, you know, he would be in Roxanne range. Of course, we know yes. Jack does not play doesn't Roxanne. Play Roxanne. It looks like another switch card being played here, too. Another switch card. How many? Is that all of them? That's now, three being played this turn. Okay. The question is, did Raymond play one earlier mm. in the game? And I'm not sure if that's the case or not. 
So we'll have to see if that's all of them or there's still one out there. But we're going to see a super rod here for Raymond, shuffling even more cards back into the deck. Looks like two energy, yep. that metal and the water energy. Yeah, 150 damage now in play. Raymond effectively erased 75% of one of those lost mines by yeah. playing three <laughs> switch cart all at once. But you can only do that so much here. There's no Radiant Serena around. It's just switch carts for those healing effects of Raymond Long's Pokemon. And there's only so many cards that you can play, uh, specifically four copies of each card <laughs> in a 60 card deck of Pokemon. So Super Odd being utilized here. We're seeing the shuffle now from Raymond. Lots of cards being played. This is a long turn. And actually, speaking of long turns, the time here as yeah, well, Chip. It is whittling down, and that might be something to consider here as well. If Jack does not have enough turns available to pull off this play, the time rules are absolutely something that are going to come into effect here. And once time gets called, we'll kind of go through what that may look like yeah. for these players. We'll see how it plays out, though. Raymond now playing yet another Super Rod. This has been such a long turn. Yes, it has been extremely long. That's why I looked at the clock and was like, whoa, this, yeah. this uh, has, honestly, it's been a long turn, but this has flown by, Chip. I cannot believe we are at one minute left here in our Masters Finals. This is, is our game three, so we've gone through a lot in uh, all of these games so far, but that Cramorant keeping things up here with the knockouts, going down to three prize cards left for Raymond Long. And now it's Jack Carter's turn. Honestly, as Jack, I think you need to just draw an attack. You need to make sure you are not turn zero, pretty much. You want Raymond to be turn zero, absolutely. Oh. I don't oh, know no. that you have time to play this chorus, to be honest. Yep. <laughs> There's 35 seconds I mean, remaining on the clock. Quick, going quick, but yeah, it's it's coming down to 30 seconds here yeah, for he Jack Carter. he needs to attack before oh, time expires no. and place his damage very quickly. You do not have time to play the Sisuian Heavy Ball. No! Yeah, the, the his sweet heavy ball especially takes so much time out of this game. Yeah. Uh, I'm shaking, so Chip. This is going to be a big deal. Yeah, Jack is going to be turn zero. Time Goodness. is almost certainly just going to expire here. S six seconds, five seconds now remaining on the clock. Wow. Jack will be turn zero, meaning Raymond's turn one, Jack is turn two, and Raymond is turn three. And we are in single elimination. There are no ties. Yeah. We no must ties. crown a champion. <laughs> we can't cut that medal in half. Give one half to each of these guys. Someone has to wear it home. So the way uh. things work is after plus three turns, whoever is ahead on prize cards wins the game. And subsequently, since we're in game three, would win the match and become our regional champion. And that heavily favors Raymond Long in this spot. Heavily. It is confirmed that Jack Carter is our turn zero. So as Jack, you got to start taking prize cards. You yeah. got to try to tie this game up. You got to get to yourself to a position where you can be ahead on prize cards as the game is ending. Yeah, this is Definitely tough here. Sableye going to come back out for Jack Carter off of that nest ball after the super rod as well. So still getting things going here. But as you said, Chip, yeah, we need to start seeing some prize cards here for Jack Carter. Other, otherwise, things are going to look quite sad over here on the right side. Attachment to the come favor retreating now into Sableye. Lost mine. Let's see. Prize cards taken, spreading more damage. Which route does Jack go? You don't necessarily have to take the prize cards this turn. What you can do is spread the damage yeah. and then just, just make sure you turn. take enough prize cards yeah. next turn. And you don't have to take all six. If you take five and leave Raymond with no real option to close out the game, yeah. that could work too. Yeah, this is tough here for Jack. He has to execute this perfectly here to be able to carry out this game. This is turn zero in our Masters Finals. We've gone to time. This is the turn where Jack needs to really calculate everything as carefully as possible to lock up this win and be crowned a regional champion here. So Jack is going to make sure uh, everything is accounted for in this, this match here, but the math especially. Yeah, I'm trying to think through things, and there may be uh, one more switch cart floating around here for Raymond. Yeah, true. We don't even know yeah. at this point in time. I think. Oh, no. Yeah, we're going to see 60 being placed on the active. 
and 60 on the Radiant Greninja. I don't think where the damage goes matters too much. You just want to make sure that, you know, you wouldn't want to put just like two damage counters on these Comfey that have one apiece because that would lead to your opponent being able to switch yeah. cart all the damage off yep. of one of those Pokemon, something like that. Yeah, it completely negates that damage in its entirety, really. So, yeah, here we go. Um, Raymond. Yeah, really thinking through it. Yeah, really thinking. I mean, honestly, this is turn one now in our timed match here. Raymond turn one. Of course, Jack can be two. And Raymond gets the last turn here. So everything needs to uh, go perfectly here for either of our players to be able to secure this win. Looks like Radiant Greninja about to be used. Not too many cards left in the deck either here for Raymond Long. Mm. There is a Super Rod. I don't see a switch card there in the hand. Let me see if I can one, two, three. I know, we gotta add these up too. <laughs> this is the one element I, we're missing I, currently. I may have seen it in the lower part of his discard pile. So I don't okay. think there is a switch card left. So Jack needs to take five prizes next turn. And yeah. the way the damage is placed, I'm not sure he'll be able to do that. 10 on the Radiant Greninja, then three onto the Manaphy. You've got four yeah. left to work with. You put four onto that Comfey. That's one. And then you have four left to work with, and you can't take another prize card. Yeah. You can take three next turn. It's not enough. And then if you just finish the turn by not going down to at least, I guess you need to take four prize cards, I should say, to at least tie the game. But then Raymond just yeah. needs to take one on exactly. his turn. So you really need to take five as Jack. You can't oh do it. Oh, goodness. Could this all come down to the fact that that Hisuian Heavy Ball was played? Like, <laughs> that, is, that would be wild. It would have been Jeff. one more turn for yeah, Jack to work with. It would have been, but in this uh, circumstance, Raymond gets that turn here. So, this is honestly coming down to the wire here, Chip, for both of our players. Artisan going to be played here from Raymond. Yeah, and I think really that there was just too much HP in play on Raymond's side of the field. Jack. Went for this Sableye line, but even if there was just one switch card down, the fact that there was three remaining, mm -hmm. Raymond had already taken one prize card, and Jack was going to take five turns to pull off, over five turns, I should say, yeah. to pull off the full Sableye board wipe. And you don't have over five turns if your opponent only has five prizes left. That is very true, Chip. And, uh, I think it's it's yeah, pretty you know. interesting as well to see that the the Cramorant has been carrying the full weight yep. here. That's the the only Pokemon that has been attacking here after Raymond Long locked up the bench has just been leading with this Cramorant turn after turn and once again going to take another prize card. Raymond Long two prize cards left, and Jack Carter. Yep. How does it turn out, Chip? Like Jack's got to no take way. four prizes this turn. Otherwise, Raymond just has to draw and pass. Yeah. Literally, Raymond can just draw and pass. And win. And then we'll be past three turns. Raymond's ahead on prizes. He becomes the regional champion here in Peoria. It's coming down to the wire here, Boo. And <laughs> Jack's thinking through anything he can do, any play he can make happen. Yep. At this point, it doesn't even matter if you send up Dragonite yep. and like attack with that for you know, knockout on the Cramorant or anything like that. It's got high HP, but it just the HP doesn't matter. Yeah. Raymond's just ahead in the game, ahead on the prize cards. I cannot believe it has come down to this, Chip. Is it going to be the fact that we've come down to time and these are the rules in place? Uh, there has to be a winner here. We're that much closer to seeing who that is, and it's looking like Raymond Long, unless Jack can pull something together here on this turn. Clara is going to bring two energy and that Sableye back into the hand, as well as that psychic energy being attached back to the Sableye. Switch cart, but... Maybe the one play for Jack would have literally been to escape rope and then hope your opponent sends up a Pokemon that doesn't have an energy card on it. Just hope that Raymond <laughs> makes a mistake and oh, then no. can't retreat it. But, I mean, True. Raymond's not going to mess that up at this point. And honestly, no what am I saying? It just doesn't even matter because yeah. Raymond's already taken four prize cards. Like, I'm trying right. to, I'm digging deep to try to find the lines here, boo. I and after Jack attacks, all Raymond has to do is pass. And the game is over. Raymond will be our Peoria regional champion. All right. So let's see. Jack Carter trying to add things up here. I mean, granted, it is a ton of math so yes uh this is a lot and you have and to think too like 
the mental fortitude you have to have to go through two days of competition. That's going to be it, yes. though. We see the extension of the fist bump. Raymond Long is our champion here in Peoria. Another Canadian taking down this championship title. Our second ever regional of the 2024 season. And that's going to Raymond Long. With the Lost Box Kyogre. What a run. What a finish. Congratulations to both of these finalists. Jack as well had a really solid, straightforward, consistent Lost Box deck and went for such a cool play here in the finals. Board locked opponent. You go for the Sableye, spread the damage, but yeah. there was just too much HPM play. The healing power of Switch Cards. Who would have thought who, <laughs> who is thought? able to get Raymond Long the win? Here yep. we go. Switch cards MVP there for Raymond's log. And Cramorant, let's not yeah, forget. Let's, Cramorant that's so took true. every knockout in the finals for Raymond Long. <laughs> yep. And didn't even use an energy to do it, Chip. Just free attacks hey, there. There was an energy attached yeah, to that Cramorant. There's some, actually two. <laughs> it was moral support. <laughs> moral support indeed. Well, here we go. Peoria, Illinois has come to a close here. And Raymond Long taking it down with Lost Box Kyogre. Chip, I was asking you. How is this going to shape things up for the future of our format? You think people are going to start eyeing up Lost Box once again? Yeah, I mean, everyone just kind of recognizes Lost Box as a really strong deck, and it's definitely got its uh, players, right? Yeah. Like people who have started to favor Lost Box. They've played it so much the past year and just have continued to stick with it, continuing yep. to improve, continuing to get better at their own game. and. Lost Box is such a difficult deck to play. There's so much sequencing that has to happen. If you're someone who's like a good Pokemon TCG player but trying to become a great one, yeah. Lost Box is definitely the deck that's going to help you grow the most. That's very, very true. I mean, it really does have all the aspects. You have to keep track of all your resources. You have sequencing. I mean, that is like the top sequencing deck. A lot deck. of math. Like, like tons of math. It so has... many different plays you can make. So yeah, many different attackers true. you could use at any given time. Yep. You have to know when it's optimal to attack with, you know, your Dragonite or your Raikou if you're playing that version. When yep. it's optimal to spread damage with Sableye. It's a lot to handle. Yeah, and not only that, but I mean, think about how many cards you're having to throw into the Lost Zone never to be used again, which means those decisions are that much more important for you as a Lost Box player. So having to consistently adapt to every single play. And that's what both of these players have been doing all weekend here. You see, this game one just really was not going anywhere for Jack Carter. It oh, took yeah. Raymond a while to get set up and rolling, but eventually was able to find a way to kind of just get too far ahead. Really played pretty wisely in this one, spreading the damage and not going under four prize cards. Playing yeah. around the Roxanne, of course, we know now Jack didn't play it. Raymond didn't necessarily have to play around it. Could have maybe targeted the resources a little more heavily, but that's definitely a skill in the game. Playing yeah. around what your opponent could have. These lists are not public knowledge just yet. Raymond didn't know what was available. So played 100% optimally here by going for this line. Yeah, but I mean, hey, kudos to Raymond Long here. Keeping it exciting for us. I mean, taking, uh, adding up all the damage here to take multiple prize cards in the last turn of the game. And that's what you see. So much damage being stacked up onto Jack Carter's side. Um, and just to be able to line up this final knockout, four prize cards to take the win there in our game one. Now, game two went much differently here. We see the completely optimal setup initially here from Jack Carter. Everything, absolutely everything going his way. And Raymond Long really not even able to play the game whatsoever. Yeah, with the Cramorant coming in, just taking knockouts, a lot of damage being left in play. Raymond yeah. just really had one come face set up. That went down, and he just never got anything rolling in this game. Yeah, that was extremely unfortunate in that game, too. Just couldn't get anything working. Really came down to that concealed cards, but nothing playable was drawn. And Raymond just scooped it up there, tying up this set. Jack Carter won, Raymond Long won, and we headed into our game three between these players. Just one match away from crowning a champion. We thought it looked a little interesting there first with Raymond Long locking up the bench here, but ended up working in his favor. Yep. Jack was not able to clear this board. There's nothing like a halucha to boost a little bit of yeah, extra damage true. into play. Was totally reliant on 
just having to swing with this Cramorant on Raymond's side. Jack was going for that damage spread, but the three switch carts ended up just being a little too good. A little too good indeed. As we see Jack Carter trying to make everything happen here, trying to calculate all the possibilities to hopefully take this down. But at the end of the day, Jack Carter ended up being our turn zero in this game. I mean, we went all the way to time here, Chip. We were casting for a hot minute. Yeah. <laughs> it was a long one, boo. Yes. <laughs> we're getting down to the end here, though. And Cramorant just able to take knockout after knockout. This was turn two of time. Jack was trying to figure out any way to prevent Raymond from just pretty much instantly winning once he was turn three. Jack couldn't yeah. find the line, couldn't do it, extends the fist, and Raymond Long becomes the Peoria Regional Champion. Yeah, it looks 